Hey everyone, this is Daniel. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the Power Apps Copilot feature, which is currently in preview. And then we'll decide if it is a friend or a foe. So we'll first start by going into Power Apps and giving it a reason to go and build the app. After that, in the tables, we'll see what it presents to us and we'll go ahead and manipulate that a bit. Then we get into the design studio and in the design studio, we'll see what all it already presents. And after that, how the Copilot will help us improve the overall design. So stick around. Copilot is something you definitely want to be aware of and we'll deep dive into that. But first, here's my intro video. So to test the Copilot preview feature, I had to opt in for it. And usually right in your home screen in Power Apps, you will actually get a message, hey, the Copilot feature is available. Do you want to opt in for it? And that's when you go and do that. So it just doesn't automatically get released in your service. You have to opt in for it. And there are ways to disable that at the tenant level, but I'll cover that in a different video. So right here in your home screen, see right over there on the home screen, this is where you can go and see this option to go ahead and now start doing an AI generated content. And there's also a little disclaimer over here that's saying that, hey, this is AI generated. So AI content can have mistakes, make sure it's accurate and appropriate before using it. But I was still very impressed that even though I used natural language to explain what I want, it picked it up just like that. So let me actually show you an example, all right? So I'm gonna actually just gonna go and paste in this one uh, explanation that says, here what it is. I want an app to keep track of all my personal goals with the ability to go ahead and add tasks for each goal. So basically almost like I'm adding a project and has subtext, that's what I'm trying to create. So I went and put that in, now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the arrow, or you can just do enter, and the generation process starts. So it comes to this first level. This first level is before you even go and create the Canvas apps, we are going to go ahead and focus on the tables. Now, let's take a look. It knew that I asked it something for personal goals. In fact, right over here on the top right, it gives me a overview of what I asked. I actually said the exact same thing, so I'm glad it gives me that just in case if I forgot it. Uh, but look at the tables over here, okay? It is very specific for my ask. It's giving me an ID, so I don't even have to worry about having a primary ID or do I generate it myself? No, it automatically went and did that. Then it gave me some uh, examples also because there's a goal name, tasks, should I mark it as completed? No, yes or no, I really like that over here, right? But what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna give it recommendations to go ahead and make some more things. So I'm actually gonna go and describe a situation. I'm gonna actually say, add a description of type text. And I'll go and now click on this, enter, I can click on that. And as you can see, it's thinking. And when it's thinking, it's actually got that little cursor moving left and right. And the moment it finishes that, you will see that on the left, that new description to column has appeared. And beautiful thing is it just didn't go ahead and drop, drop a blank column. It actually gave some examples over here too. So remember, this was not there. I asked it, it provided the description column, and then it gave me some examples. It was just amazing because one of the goals, for example, it says is that uh, learn French, if I do set that as my goal, um, what is going to be the task assigned to that? What is going to be the description? It automatically went and did that for me. But, but I'm gonna quite build on this a little bit more. So take a look at this other description that I add. I say that add a choice type column called cost associated and make it a choice type which says yes, no, and maybe, all right? So, so let's see how well this natural language actually works with the Copilot feature. So I'm gonna click on the enter. Again, it starts thinking. It's going ahead and processing everything I said with natural language. And then very soon, it's gonna go ahead and add this new column over here. And there you go, it went and actually gave me cost associated. It gives me all this really neat effect, effect over here. So I wanna direct your attention to the bottom left of the screen. That's where it is suggestions. And it's giving you some examples of the suggestions. And right off the bat, the first one I liked is that refresh the data. So if I now come over here to the right, I'll just type in the refresh the data. I'll go ahead and click on enter and hit that, um, hit the arrow over here. You will see that all this data automatically gets refreshed. Like the example data gets refreshed. And I really like that because it helps me to understand how all of this is working. The next thing I like is give me suggestions. So I'm gonna come back over here to the right. I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. I'll go ahead and click over here. And let's see what other suggestions that is giving us. So again, AI is processing it. So the first suggestion it gives me is rename the table and column name. Okay, I, I, I hear you AI Copilot, but that really is not what I'm looking for. But let me see what else it does. It says change column data types. Now that's a good one, right? Because you could have scenarios where you might have something as a single line of text 
or you want to switch that over to a choice type column and vice versa. Something could be a choice type column. You want to slip that. So I like that idea that it says. And then it also gives me some other suggestions. You know, do you want to add option values? Do you want to remove them? So I'd like the suggestions, but for right now, I am pretty good. So I'm now going to go and now create the app. So let's go and click on this button on the bottom, right? Create the app. And there the processing starts. It says, thanks, Daniel. We are creating an app for you. On the bottom, it says getting things ready. And that this is a look and feel we are very similar to, because if you go and use Canvas apps and we're actually getting into the Canvas app studios, we get the similar effect. So I do like that there's some maintenance of the consistency so that we're not overwhelmed by something very new altogether. This we are very familiar with. And now we are here into the Canvas Studio. It is going ahead and loading. This again, we are very familiar with because we've come into the studio a bunch of times and we are seeing this loading functionality. But one of the things that I've noticed is that once it's loading on the top left, it already has the components place highlighted and then it went over to the screen. Not a big deal. I just noticed that when it came in. All right, so I'm good with this welcome. I'm gonna click on. So now that we are in the studio, let's take a few minutes to just digest all this information that has been provided to us. A couple of things immediately stood out to me. On the left side, we only have two screens. There is the home screen, and then there is the personal goals page one. Remember, personal goals was actually very similar to the table that we gave. That was actually very similar to the AI suggestion that I made. So it's maintaining that consistency right down to the screen name in the Canvas app. So I love that, all right? So two things were there. There was two screens, that was out of the box, and the naming convention of the screen also is very similar to the suggestion we gave. Let's toggle over to the right. On the right now, we see this new icon over there, all right? So that is the co-pilot preview functionality and it says welcome to copilot so i can at any point toggle this off click on it and toggle it on again okay so it just slides to the right it slides back again so it's always there for your convenience now in your home screen we have the one and only the copilot control feature available at your discretion and this has been done automatically but I want to spend a little bit of time as how deep dive this goes into. Uh, so we know the fact that when we come over here, we can actually ask some questions, but I really want you to see what all happens when you pop the hood on the left side. So on the co-pilot, the questions that you ask over here, it actually goes through and gets all this information from the properties that we've selected. So for example, if I go back and click on this co-pilot on the left side, all right, in the tree view, and if I toggle over to the right, you will see that all of these data sources are factored in and all of these fields are factored in. So for you and me, we know we only have one table because we created that one table, but all of these fields have been factored in. So anytime that you are having any discussion over here with Copilot directly in your app, it's pulling all the data from your table. So I just wanna pause away and say that you've got the option to go ahead and change this because at some point you might actually manipulate that data source with the tables after the fact. Well, you've got the flexibility now, come and add it in the field, remove a field. It is there at your disposal and not only did it automatically create it, but you can go and fully modify that as well. So just as a test, if I were to now go and play it, here I can go and ask a question. I can go and say any goal with language, all right? If I just type that in, it is going to go ahead and pull information directly from your table and come back and give an answer. It says, yes, there is a goal to learn French. The goal name is learn French and the description is learn the language of love. You see, I didn't have to explain that, hey, give me the exact goal name or anything. It went and actually pulled that directly from that. So that co-pilot component, which is there out of the box, is pretty sweet, all right? And then I assured you that you can actually go and modify that. So now let's go and focus our attention in the second screen that is provided. And right over here, you can see the overall screen effect also is so much nicer. Even the simple fact that on the top over here, we've actually got the navigation buttons, two different navigation buttons. Right below the navigation button, there's another control just to show you that, hey, that's the one that I've actually selected on. Even the user interface is so much more inviting to the eye. And then from here onwards, you're actually very familiar with it. On this side over here, there's a container my bar and the container section, there's actually a gallery. On the right, there is actually a, a form. All of this, you're very familiar with it. But, but did you notice something on the left? They have automatically from the get-go used containers, which is already helping you to start thinking and planning towards making this app more responsive. Containers are the best way to go ahead and start making these apps more responsive. And they are already going and giving you the flexibility to do that. Right from the get-go, they've used containers, so you can actually take it and further tweak it, all right? Pretty neat. 
Next is they've gone ahead and added a search functionality, which means now the filter of the gallery will happen based on the search items that you put in over here. Uh, you've got the flexibility to go ahead and edit the form how you see fit. You're kind of familiar with all of this. Um, so the neat thing over here is that it went and automatically generated that, but it also gave you the flexibility now to go and improve it how you see fit. Now, remember the co-pilot control that I showed you directly in the home screen? What if you wanna do your own manipulation or you wanna build something from scratch? I come to a new screen, I go and build a blank screen because I wanna do other stuff over here. How do I go and now get that co-pilot feature? Well, that's pretty simple. On the left side now, you go and click on the insert and over here, if you just go and search for co-pilot, you will see that in the input section, there is this co-pilot preview. And I can actually go and click on it and it'll drag it over here. First thing it asks you is what is the data source that you want? I'll go and select my data source. In the data source, it'll actually make sure that you've got all the fields tied to it. You can add and remove them. Uh, and so you've got the flexibility to go ahead and now build your old code pilot. And also in your existing, once you've got to, you know, gone ahead and assigned this copilot preview functionality, you can come to settings, you can come to upcoming features, you scroll almost all the way to the bottom and right over here is the copilot component, which means that in your existing apps, you can go ahead and turn on this copilot feature. I mean, as long as the feature has been allowed, this preview feature has been allowed in your tenant, only then can you come to your existing apps and test it. Be a little cautious with that, you know, not just an existing production one. Go ahead and maybe make a copy of that production app or a solution just to see, hey, if I were to implement this preview feature, how would it look? How would it function? Is it worth something for me to waiting for? You know, always don't do it in a direct produ production one. Make a copy of that production and then test it in that copy. Uh, but right over here, just in case you want to see, this is where you've also got the chatbot component. We've, we've talked about the chatbot a little bit before. We've talked about the modern controls before, before in, in different videos. This is where you come. You can go and turn this on. The premise of this video is the co-pilot component. And again, you can do this for existing apps that you have as long as this preview has been turned on in your tenant. So we spent the last few minutes taking a look at all of this co-pilot functionality, how the AI goes ahead and actually generates a full table and a full app. What is your overall general consensus, Daniel? That's the question that you're waiting for me to answer. And I'd say that my consensus is definitely guarded for now but it's more on the positive side. First of all, the term co-pilot, that means that this is there to actually help you, to assist you to do something. This is not a replacement. So take that fear off your mind, take that worry off your mind. This is not going to take away your job of building some amazing apps that you've already been building for, no. But this will actually give you some assistance to really improve your apps and just make sure that, hey, if you want a little bit of assistance to improve a few things or to go ahead and actually keep an eye on any of the changes that you wanna make, um, hey, this is perfect for that. Also, the Copilot preview for the home screen to go ahead and make a search, that is actually a lot of work to manually do that. It is achievable. You know, you could go ahead and put in a gallery, get it to the data source. You could go and put in some search and filter functions. But hey, the Copilot does that out of the box for you. And it also goes and presents that data in such a nice fashion. Uh, building something out of the box is so much more easier. And therefore, I find that very inviting altogether. One more thing that caught my attention is that when we were going through the building phase, you know, go ahead and give it a name. Uh, when we gave it the table, the only thing we could do in the table was use a Dataverse. We did not have the options to use any of our other data sources such as SharePoint or SQL or heck, Excel sitting in OneDrive. None of those were available. This is purely from a Dataverse standpoint. Uh, for so some of you, this might actually be a showstopper as well because you might have big data sources completely outside Dataverse. Uh, so for my suggestion for that is you could still go with building the app after that, switch over the data source altogether. Granted, granted, you will have to make some changes. There's nothing to fix that right now. But like I said, keep an eye on this feature. This is just the preview feature. There might be more changes coming up and who knows, some of this could also include other data sources as well. So hopefully this video was useful to you. It gives you a good overview of what this Power Apps Copilot preview feature is all about. Uh, this is also something that you can opt in for to test in your tenant. Keep in mind that this is preview. So you only want to test it as a non-production app. And like I said, you can test it with your existing apps. Don't do that with your production apps. So hopefully this video was useful to you. And as always, keep using Power Apps. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment? 
either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.